Pippin Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Good morning students. My name is Ms. Vishakha Viluskar and I'm a teacher at St. Xavier's High Secondary School. Today, we're going to study a lesson. But before we begin with our lesson, I want you to look at the slide. You need to identify this famous people that I'm going to project. I'm sure you may have identified them. The first one is Oprah Winfrey. The second person is M.S. Dhoni. The third person is Walt Disney. And the fourth lady in the picture is Kalpana Chawla. Yes, these are some of the well-known people who have had a dream for themselves and aspired to be great people that we know of them today. These people have worked really hard. They have fought all the odds that they can think of to emerge victorious. It's a dream that they harbored when they were a child and they allowed themselves to grow in leaps and bounds to accomplish their goal. It was a dream that defined them. It was a dream that helped them live their life to the fullest and accomplish the impossible. But what if this idea of dream is taken a bit too far? What if, while accomplishing our dream, we forget that there is a reality that we need to embrace and not just merely fantasize about the dream? So today, we are going to study a lesson called Going Places by E.R. Barton. Before we go any further, we need to know about the author. A.R. Barton is a modern writer who lives in Zurich and writes in English on contemporary problems and issues. In this particular lesson, A.R. Barton explores the theme of adolescent fantasizing and hero worship. Now before we go any further and dwell deeper into the lesson, we have to know the characters in this particular lesson. Firstly, we have Sophie. Now Sophie is the main protagonist of the story. She's a dreamer. She dreams of owning a boutique or becoming an actress or a fashion designer. She hero worships Denny Casey. She's so engrossed in her dreams that she forgets that she lives a very simple life, a life that, where she has to toil hard and help her family. She's mocked by her family for her dreams and all the more so because her dreams are unrealistic according to her family members. The next person we need to know about is Gen Z. Now, Gen Z is Sophie's friend. She's more realistic than Sophie is. She reminds Sophie time and again that the two of them belong to, a, they come from a low strata of society and therefore they have to work hard. And at the end of the day, they are earmarked to work in the local biscuit factory. And as far as the thought of working in the biscuit factory is concerned, she's melancholic about the thought because she knows that is what the future is for her. She's considered by Gen Z as walky and unable to keep secrets. The next person we have to know is Derek. Now Derek is Sophie's younger brother. Though young, he understands Sophie's unrealistic ways. He even quips that Sophie thinks money grows on trees. The next person we have to know is Jeff. Now Jeff is Sophie's elder brother. He's an apprentice mechanic who travels to the far end of the city. He's a quiet person an introvert, someone who wouldn't want to share any personal secrets with Sophie. He loves the game of football and idolizes Danny Casey. We get to know this because there, is, there are posters uh, in his room. The next person we have to know is Sophie's father. Now Sophie's father is a working class man. He returns home each night grimy and sweaty and scoops food into his mouth. He treats Sophie with disdain whenever Sophie has to mention about any of her dreams, right, from opening a boutique to becoming an actress, he's not very happy about what she has to tell him because he knows, according to him, those, uh, those all, all whatever she say, uh, tells him are all lies or for that matter, it's all about her wild stories, which he is uncomfortable with. He scolds her for telling wild stories and dismisses her unrealistic ambitions and desire. The mother, Sophie's mother, she appears to be a homemaker who is resigned to her dreary life. I quote, Sophie watched her mother, stooped over the sink and wondered at the incongruity of the delicate seeming bow which fastened her apron strings. This tells us that Sophie's mother was a homemaker 
and her life was resigned to washing the dishes that were piled up in, in the sink. Beyond that, she had a no life of her own. Most importantly, Sophie does not want to end up like her mother doing the household shoes. The last person who is significant here is Danny Casey. Danny Casey is a famous Irish football star who is greatly admired by many. He is described as a young, bright and beloved prodigy. He plays for the United. He is adored by not only the likes of the people but also Sophie and her family because weekly they visit the local stadium to watch the United play. We need to know a little about the plot. Now, what is the plot of the lesson? The story revolves around a young adolescent, namely Sophie, who comes from a lower middle class family and who is destined to work in the local biscuit factory after school. She dreams of owning a boutique, becoming a manager or an actress or a fashion designer and she adores or hero worships the Irish prodigy Danny Casey. It is very interesting to know here she has a dream, just like you and me, the way we all have dreams, even she harbors a dream for herself. But her dreams are nothing realistic. Why not realistic? Because according to her family, they are someone who have worked hard, who are toiling hard in order to make both the ends meet. And therefore, they are destined to work in the local biscuit factory and not go beyond the, the life assigned to them. Sophie is very dejected with the life that she lives. She feels a tightening in her throat when she looks at the small room that was steamy from the stove and cluttered with the heavy breathing of the man, that is her father, who was seated uh, at the table, and the dirty washing pile up in the corner. She finds solace. At that point in time, she finds solace going to her brother, who is busy tinkering with a part of a motorcycle. Her brother, we have been told, was three years out of school. He's an he's a me uh, apprentice mechanic and who travels to the far, off, uh, far end of the city. She believes that Jeff might free her from the drudgery of her life, as she imagines that he lives an exotic and mysterious life, traveling to unknown parts of the city and meeting interesting people. Now in doing so, Sophie believes that he is someone who can take her away from the life that she's living. Her father forbids her even to, to go out with her brother, and therefore, she believes that he may be having a secret life and she has to be with him to know what the life is all about. She wants to live a life of freedom, a life which she really yearns for. And therefore, all the sophisticated ideas that come to her, to her mind are all the doings of her situation. And therefore, to impress Jeff, what she does, she tells him that she met Danny Casey at the arcade, which he doesn't believe in, and asks her to describe how he looks. Now, usually, as, as teenagers, we usually have the habit of imagining things, you know, uh, blowing things out of proportion, telling things in exaggerated manner. The same way, even uh, very innocently, Sophie did the same thing. Jeff tells the same thing to the father, that Sophie met Danny Casey, but her father is indifferent to the news disclosed. Why? Because he knows his daughter is, is habituated in telling stories. Both the father and son continue to discuss Danny Casey and his sporting ability. In order to draw their attention, she joins in the conversation and she announces that, that he is going to buy a shop, a dream which she personally harbors. The father dismisses uh, Sophie's story, calling it, calling it this another of your wild stories. Now he does know that she is not speaking the truth. Knowing her brother doesn't believe her story, she tells her brother that Denny Casey has asked her out on a date. She tells her brother to promise not to tell anyone. However, unfortunately for her, she is disappointed to, to be questioned by her friend Jency at the end of the game. After the game, a weekly ritual, a weekly pilgrimage to, to watch the United play, the family visit and that, that is supposed to be the happiest time in their life. They enjoy and return back. On their way back, Gen Z questions her as to what is the story about Denny Casey and her. And in order to cover up, she, she, she feigns that she does not know anything. She feels disappointed on learning that Jeff did not really share, keep her secret a secret. And she thought that it was a Jeff and her thing and not Gen Z thing. She's disappointed to learn that. She is afraid that Gen Z would disclose a secret to the entire neighborhood and was afraid a row would ensue at home if her father gets to know of her lie. On the night she said that they would meet, Sophie walks along the canal 
a canal, writes, waits on a bench beneath a solitary elm for Denny Casey, seemingly believing that he might appear. She comes to terms with the reality, but briefly, but briefly, but is afraid to tell her family. As she walks back to her dismal life, Sophie sees her father's bicycle near the pub and she retreats back again, uh, to, to fantasy, imagining Danny Casey scoring a goal in front of a roaring crowd. In this fantasy, Casey is much like Sophie, no taller and no bolder than she is. Here the reader almost believes that Sophie has met Danny Casey but realizes that only time she actually sees him was, was at the games where he enthralls a crowd with his crisp goals. Now the entire story tells you about how the situation is with, De uh, with Sophie. Sophie lives in a make-believe world. The moment we are unhappy with our lives, the moment we, we think that life is dull, we tend to escape from reality. And here she does the same thing. She escapes away from the harsh reality of her, of her life by imagining a life that she would want to have. Let us see what the themes are. The first theme is fantasy versus reality. The entire narrative of going places is based on the premise of fantasy. Day in and day out, Sophie fantasizes. Fantasizes owning a boutique, becoming an actress, becoming a manager, or for that matter, becoming a fashion designer like Mary Kwon. And she wants to be a successful one, something that the whole town, the whole city would look up to. She's full of unrealistic dreams for herself and for her future. She talks to her friend about owning a boutique time and again. She tells her brother Jeff of meeting Denny Casey. She lives in a make-believe world where she dreams of a luxurious life and therefore anything and everything that she would want to do has to be a bit of sophisticated. She wants to escape from the dreary reality of her working class life where her father mentions that if she ever comes into money, she has to buy them a decent house to live in. The priority of the house was not of having a luxurious life but for them the priority then was to own a house a house which was decent enough if you pay attention closely to to sophie's family they come from a lower middle class family how do we know that sophie comes from a lower middle class family firstly jeff works as an apprentice mechanic nothing fancy about it secondly the father at the end of the day after working very hard, the grime and sweat on, onto his face, he, he, he has a blue collar job that is evident. Thirdly, we know that the, 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 at the end of the school, they are supposed to be part of the local biscuit factory and be working there. However, this is something what she does not want for her life. All these points, even the house which was very small and cramped up, where there are dirty piles line, uh, dirty pile lined up, all indicates that they belong to a lower middle class family, something that she is not very comfortable about. And therefore, because of her dreams and ambitions, there is, there is always a conflict between the ambition and the personality. Her ambition and personality are always at odds with her family's expectation of her. Her family wants her to be serious, to take life seriously and not to daydream or fantasize about things. Her family wants her to embrace and accept reality and think realistically. The reality was they were from a lower middle class family and the priority for them was earning enough to, to fend for themselves. And as a teenager, she has her dreams and aspirations. However, it does not match with her family's requirements. By and large, we notice right from Derek, Derek Jeff, Jeff is not as much, however, Derek, the father, usually mocks her for, for the dream that she harbors. There is a constant conflict between who she wants to be and who her family wants her to be. So there is a constant conflict between the family's expectation for her and her own expectation for herself. And therefore, this plays up on the class struggle, the socio-economic background that we find that she is a part of. Coming from a lower middle class family really does not help her but only makes the situation worse for her. Knowing that she comes from a working class background and she's earmarked to work for the local biscuit factory, what she does, all she has to do is, is, is not have ambition and that's exactly what her father tries, and, uh, tries to tell her. Her father tries to explain to her that 
she has to be realistic and not harbor dreams which are beyond their reach because as people who would want to just have simple food at, at the end of the day on, on their table in front of them and therefore there's a constant clash between the socio-economic background, the class that she comes from and the ambition that she harbors. The ambition that she harbors belongs to the elite class, something like being a fashion designer to a manager or for that matter even being an actress is something high profile. However, in her situation it is next to impossible. All re it requires is money, a mo money that she does not own or money that, she, that would take her years to accumulate. And knowing that she comes from a working class background and they are earmarked to work for the local biscuit factory, it is very difficult for her to come to terms with the reality. The reality that she is not willing to accept and move ahead with. More so, gender is also an important theme to look at. Gender simply because she imagines that she has to be something very feminine, right from being a fashion designer to an actress or for that matter, even someone who would own a boutique. These are very feminine jobs that, that any women during that time would want to take up. And therefore, she, she wants to be something what her mother isn't. Her mother is someone who is bound by the four walls of her household and someone who is totally into the household shows. She wouldn't want to be someone like her mother and therefore the gender roles are very much specific and very profound. Firstly, Jeff is someone who is into a masculine role, that is someone who is a mechanic, uh, a apprentice and a standard job that any person would take up. Now let us see what the questions are. Now the, the questions would highlight in section D of question, uh, under question number 9 and they would be, and you would be tested for two marks. The first question, what were Sophie's dreams regarding her future in the story going places? Now Sophie dreamt of owning a boutique or becoming a manager or becoming an actress. These were her dreams for her future in the story going places. The second one. Where was it most likely that the two girls would find work after school? Now the two girls, Jensi and Sophie, both were earmarked to work in the local biscuit factory and that is where they were destined to work after school. What were the options that Sophie was dreaming of? As discussed earlier, the dreams that she harbored and the options that she was dreaming of were the same. Firstly, she always wanted to own a boutique or become a manager or an actress or a fashion designer, something that would be more sophisticated for her taste. Why does Gen Z discourage her from having unrealistic dreams? Now, Gen Z being the realistic one discourages her friend Sophie from dreaming unrealistic dreams because she's aware that at the end of the day, come what may, however much they may be aspiring to do something great, they still were earmarked to work in the local biscuit factory and therefore they cannot afford to dream of something that they cannot really accomplish. How does Sophie include her brother Jeff in her fantasy for the future? How does Sophie include her brother Jeff in her fantasy for the future? Sophie saw herself riding through the world behind Jeff where he wore new shiny black leathers and she a yellow dress with a kind of cape that flew behind where the whole world would rise to greet them with a sound of applause. Now that was her fantasy for the future which included Jeff in that. The next one, how did Sophie say she met Danny Casey? Now according to Sophie, she met Danny Casey at the arcade when she was at the Royce's shop looking at the clothes. Why didn't Sophie want Gen Z to know about a story with Danny? Sophie did not want Gen Z to know about a story with Danny because According to uh, Sophie, Gen Z was quirky and letting her know something would imply letting the entire neighborhood to know about. The reason why Sophie, want, uh, Sophie did not want Gen Z to know about a story with Denny was because firstly, Gen Z was gawky and secondly, Gen Z would disclose the news to the entire neighborhood resulting in her, resulting in her parents knowing about the, the lie and that would result in a row at home. Which country did Danny Casey play for? And how did he fascinate his football fans? Now Danny Casey played for the United, he played for Ireland and for the team United. And how did he fascinate his uh, f football fans? He fascinated his football fans by striking a crisp goal that would enthrall the entire audience. Which was the only occasion when 
she got to see Denny Kesey in person. The only occasion when Sophie got to see Denny Kesey in person was at the, at the weekly match she went to see along with her family. Thank you. Have a nice day. Prudent Scholars Powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस